Hello everyone, thank you for coming and having a quick lunch. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm Juan Pablo, I'm one of the Glade developers, but uh, this time I'll be talking about a new thing I've been working on while uh, working for Endless. And it's a tiny library uh, that lets you embed GTK widgets in a web view of WebKit 2. Okay, so um, what do you do if you need uh, to embed a web a web kit, uh, if you need to embed a GTK widget in WebKit? Um, this uh, library uh, will let you do that, and it's a proof of concept, um, but it's already working, and we are using it in some production application. Um, so, what's the use case for this? In our case, uh, we wanted to reutilize the GTK component that we have, uh, and the actual example was we have uh, some applications that are made to display content, and the articles we display are, of course, uh, displayed using a web view because they are HTML articles. So we have this component that's a, a related article. So you can go through different uh, articles that are related to the main one. And that's implemented in GTK. But the, the user experience wasn't really good because uh, with GTK, with WebKit 2, uh, since there's no way to uh, embed the widgets in the article itself, what we did was basically uh, trigger a uh, popover that will be triggered by scrolling the, the article to the end. But that doesn't work uh, too well. It's kind of confusing for the users when something pops out of nowhere. So the ideal case is to embed that component inside the article itself so that you don't have to maintain two different implementations, one in GTK and one in HTML. So this is how one of the applications uh, look like. Here you can see in red, uh, that's a web view with a regular HTML inside. And this is how the popover used to look like. And that was basically triggered when uh, you scroll down to the end of the article. And this is how it looks uh, in a development version with uh, embedding the actual widget inside the web view. Okay, so why is it called Maxwell? Uh, as you can probably know, naming things, new things, is one of the hardest things, at least for me. Uh, so I wanted to have something that's easy to remember. Um, so uh, this project was inspired by the Broadway backend of GTK, which is a backend like a X11 or Wayland that lets you uh, run any GTK application in a, in a browser. So, and the Broadway backend uh, was named after the X11 uh, Broadway release, which one of their uh, feature was called X Asian 96, that reminded me to Asian 86, which is Maxwell Smart. So that's for why we call it Maxwell. <laughs> Okay, so how does it work? First of all, I want to say I'm not a WebKit hacker. I have uh, no knowledge of the internals. So what I wanted to do was basically try to implement this idea I had using only public API. Um, so one of the biggest problems where I think uh, why it's uh, difficult to embed a GTK widget in WebKit is because WebKit 2 uses a split process model. So they split things in different process where you have the main thread where the UI runs 
and then you have two extra processes that are launched by WebKit. Um, one is the web process, where all the web core things are run, uh, JavaScript and other things, and then you have a different process for all the network related things. Um, so, to embed the widget, uh, what do we do? What do we need? Uh, we basically need two uh, main things. One is a way to display the widget inside the DOM tree. So that's basically two things. One, a way to get uh, the image inside the DOM tree and a way for the DOM tree to adapt to the actual widget so that text will wrap around it and things like that that you will expect uh, for a regular uh, HTML element. And the other big part is how to uh, handle the input events properly, how to uh, get the events either from WebKit and pass them to the actual widget that you're embedding, or uh, catch the events before uh, they get to the web view. So, uh, inspired by uh, the Broadway backend, I had an idea and I thought that uh, if I had all the children's uh, that you add to a web view uh, rendered to an off-screen uh, window, then uh, it would be possible uh, to get that image data and render it into a canvas element inside the DOM tree. Uh, Okay, so one of the key features I use from the WebKit uh, API is a function uh, that lets you run any arbitrary JavaScript code inside the uh, JavaScript VM of the web view. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so one of the things, uh, if we wanted to use a canvas element, uh, would be we need to keep in synchronize the size of the widget with the size of the canvas element. And that would be done quite easily by running some JavaScript to set the width and height of the widget. So every time uh, the size of a widget changes, I run some JavaScript to uh, make the change in the canvas element. So the other... Uh, and that will basically uh, cover the, all the interaction in the DOM tree. Since it's a regular uh, HTML element, all the other like text and everything will just wrap up and work uh, exactly as you would expect. Um, so the next big thing will be how to get the image data from the widget that we had in the offer screen window into the actual uh, canvas element. Um, the first really uh, rough implementation, I guess you could basically, since you can run any JavaScript code, you could uh, get the buffer data and serialize it to JavaScript array and then use that. But that obviously would be too uh, slow. Uh, so thankfully, uh, uh, WebKit lets you uh, register a custom URI scheme so every time uh, you can define any arbitrary uh, new URI, and every time uh, there's a request for that URI, uh, WebKit will call uh, a callback for you, so you can actually uh, implement it and put, basically return any data you want to the JavaScript. So uh, that's what I did. I created a MacWell custom URI. So uh, from the JavaScript, JavaScript side, all you have to do is create a new uh, request uh, with a widget ID that you want to get the data from. Uh, one very important thing is to set the type to array buffer so there's no uh, weird conversion between uh, JavaScript arrays and binary format. 
And once you have that, uh, once you get that uh, data back, uh, all you have to do is wrap that data uh, into an array, and then you can use regular uh, Canvas API to actually draw the image. So, um, what's going on behind the scenes? Uh, this is a simplified version of what's going on because WebKit has more than one process, but I'm just gonna split things in to the main process where the UI and GDK is running and everything that runs on WebKit. So, uh, you get a draw from a widget that causes a damage event when uh, I have a handler, a special handler in the damage event that calls a JavaScript function that basically uh, is for drawing the widget that will uh, get the uh, image data using the special uh, URI we just talked about that will get them the, the data then uh, the WebKit will call in the URI special custom URI handler, which uh, the current implementation grabs the off-screen data using a, converting it into a GDK path, which then it's uh, used as the source for a memory IO stream. That's how uh, the handler are implemented, and that's how the WebKit uh, network process reads from the memory. So it's gonna read using that stream. And then, like I showed in the previous example, that's turned into an image data where you can use it uh, with good image data function. So that will be for uh, how to get data, image data inside the uh, web view. Uh, the other part is how to properly handle input events. My first attempt was to actually use uh, to listen to events in the DOM element and then uh, marshal them back to the application. Uh, but then I remember that GTK actually has a nice way to get events before they reach the the web view. So there's one special. Um, a method that you can implement that's called pick embedded child. That's basically something that GDK uh, runs before sending events to the widget uh, so that it can decide for which uh, off screen widget the event should be dispatched. Um, so to know to which widget uh, I should send the event to, um, I, what I really need to know is the uh, position uh, relative to the web view viewport, and that's calculated uh, using JavaScript. Uh, there's really no good way to do it uh, in a performant way. So what you have to do is call this function, get bound in client rec, which basically calculates um, the position of the element by iterating over all the going up the hierarchy of the DOM tree. Uh, but the thing is, you have to uh, call that function every time there's a scroll or a resize event, or even every time there's something in the DOM tree that changes. For example, uh, if you add an element that has more text or things like that, then you have to recalculate. But uh, Hopefully, there are some new specs that eventually will be implemented, so there will be a way to actually listen to position and size changes of every element using some new mutation observer. Um, but that's uh, still a draft and it's not implemented yet in WebKit. But hopefully, we'll get a better way to do that. Okay, so. About the API, uh, what I tried to do was use as much, uh, use a, to make it as tiny as possible and use as much uh, common interfaces as possible. 
So I come up with something that's uh, really simple for the application developer. All you have to do is create a Maxwell web view, which uh, derives from the regular WebKit web view. Then you can you create your own widget that want to embed in it. All you have to do is set a name uh, to that widget, and then you can add it directly to the web view using regular GTK container uh, interface. And the only special thing that you need to do, uh, there, uh, you need a way. We need a way to tell the, where we want that widget in the DOM tree. And all you have to do is create an element, a canvas element, with a special class called GTK widget. And the ID that you set the name of the widget. Okay, so I guess it's demo time. Okay, so this is a tiny example that I used to uh, develop uh, Maxwell. As you can see, I'll show you. It's a web view. And that is actually a GTK widget. You can see there's a button, labels, and entry. And they resize and wrap around the DOM tree as if they were regular uh, HTML elements. And one nice thing is that you can even uh, use uh, CSS to change the looks of the widget and that works quite well. So, I don't know, let's say... And there you go. Okay, so for example, I connected this uh, entry activate signal to load a new page when you type it in. So for example, we can go to the wallet website. Okay, another, now I'm going to show you the, the real world application. So this is an application that's meant for, uh, to display news articles. Uh, so you have categories and things like that. And if you go to an article, that's actually a web view. And at the end here, you'll see the GTK component for related uh, content. Okay, so um, to build uh, this tiny library, it's in GitHub under endless uh, account. Uh, all you have to do is like any other regular Mison uh, project, and uh, that's it, basically. So uh, what's next? Um, I have a few ideas to optimize even further, uh, because right now there's a lot of copy involved uh, every time a widget changes, um, which is, uh, I guess, faster than the Broadway backend. So, uh, for regular uh, widget users, uh, it's 
uh, pretty good. But if you want to make a widget that uh, displays uh, some animations or a video, then things get more uh, complicated because it takes a lot of memory bandwidth. Because you can imagine that uh, you render it, you are rendering to an off-screen window, which is basically resides in X server memory. So then. Uh, the main thread gets the memory with converts the memory to a pixel buff, so there you have one copy. Then uh, that's copied to the network uh, process, another copy, and that probably gets copied again to the web core and then back again to the main thread to actually display. So uh, one idea I have is try to use the texture from Pixma uh, extension uh, so that uh, I can export the actual uh, offering content as a texture and use it directly with WebGL. Uh, uh, but I haven't looked into much, too much into it, and that's probably going to need some work on WebKit itself, maybe to expose the GL context or something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, eventually, once I have some time to work on it, I'd like to give that a try. If anyone knows uh, if this is possible or not, please let me know. Uh, and yeah, and another thing, uh, eventually, if someone finds this interesting in using it, maybe uh, it would be a nice thing to propose it uh, upstream. Uh, probably not as a, something that uh, we will add directly to uh, the regular web view, but maybe add a new class specifically for this purpose. Okay. Thank you.